Alright, welcome back everybody. Today, we're going to be playing some Warzone, but we're not just going to play it like normal. We all love dropping in to Warzone, getting some limbs, hanging with the squad, just having fun. But have you ever thought about what it takes to actually get from now the helicopter to the ground, right? You jump out, you skydive for a little bit, pull the chute, and then you land. But how does a parachute work? In fact, how does anything fly? A bird, a plane, a helicopter, a parachute. It's all really the same concept. It's something that you would learn in an aerospace engineering degree in college, maybe your sophomore year, but the concept is a lot simpler than that. So even somebody in middle school, high school could understand how something flies, the basic principles of flight. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today using a parachute as an example. So if we pause it right here and look at it at the front, we can get a good idea of how a parachute works. If you look closely at it, you can see that there are open cells. The parachute is actually open in front. And what happens is that it sh as the parachute is flying through the air, air it flows into the front of the parachute, which causes it to expand and form a semi-rigid structure, which is what the green arrows are showing, um, is it's expanding and forming into the shape of a wing. And so that's how a parachute opens up and then is able to provide the lift and drag that you need. So next, let's kind of look at it from the side instead and start talking about how a parachute actually flies. So we're going to zoom in to the parachute itself and we're going to trace what a cutout section of the parachute would look like. It's going to be somewhat of an airfoil shape. So we're tracing along the top and then there's that front opening which is fairly flat um, where the air is coming in. And then uh, the bottom of the parachute is actually a little angled, and so it's much thinner at the very back of the parachute versus the front. And this gives it its wing-like shape. Now what happens is that air comes in that front gap and then recirculates within the parachute, within those cells of the parachute that we saw in the other view. And this recirculation essentially forms a solid mass of air and so we can redraw what a semi-rigid shape of this section looks like. And it looks a lot more like a wing with a little rounded front. And that rounded front is formed by really the recirculating air on the inside of the parachute. So let's get rid of the air. And this is essentially the shape of a cross section formed between the parachute fabric and that recirculation region. Now, let's start drawing we know that the parachute or the person and the parachute is moving forward. We saw that in the video, but they're also moving more down. You know, they're descending as they're moving forward and their descent is more than their forward motion. And so a lot of the times we think about in aerodynamics, you think not only about the parachute flying through the sky, but instead as the parachute as more of a stationary object with the air coming at it. It's it's really the same thing, just thought of it in two different ways. Now, if you're looking, if this parachute is ascending and moving forward, then what direction is the air coming from? So if we think about the air coming from it, then it's really coming up and at it. So not in the same exact uh, parallel to the parachute, but a little more up because we're falling more than we're moving forward. And so the direction of the airflow, we can kind of think about in this upward, slightly to the right direction. Now let's start talking about the other forces acting on this, how we actually fly. The first one we're going to introduce is drag. So that's the force acting parallel to the flow of air, essentially, um, pulling the parachute back or slowing it down in a way. Um, the other force, the main force on how you fly is what we call lift. Makes sense. It's lifting it off the ground. It's the force that counteracts the weight. And lift is perpendicular to the airflow and perpendicular, therefore, to drag as well. And now we have one last force, like we talked about, weight. There's the weight of the person and there's the somewhat minimal weight of the parachute. Now the person is out of the frame, it's down below, right? And so he is basically dragging, falling down and the parachute is helping lift it up. But there's still a weight acting on the entire system. We're gonna draw it here for simplicity, but main, the weight, the center of mass essentially is probably closer to the person than the parachute. 
So you have the airflow coming in, lift, drag, and weight. These are the forces currently acting on the parachutes as you're falling through the sky. Now the first force that we're gonna go into more detail in is the lift. So we're gonna make a clean slate and then now we're gonna visualize the airflow going over the parachute. So again, airflow is coming at it or you can think about the parachute moving through the air, whichever. Um, we're gonna be thinking about airflow coming at the parachute just for visualization purposes. Where the air is coming in and then it gets forced essentially around the parachute, the upper side and the lower side of the parachute. Um, and what we're drawing are what you call streamlines. So essentially it's what a single particle of air looks like as it passes over the parachute. It's a simplified way of looking at airflow. So we have these streamlines that go over the top of the parachute and then you also have air that kind of curves and goes under the parachute as well. I'm going to draw one more streamline to kind of visualize the whole system. And erase the airflow, it looks like this. So if you think about the very front of the airfoil, you have particles that hit it, and you have some streamlines that go over and some streamlines that go under, right? And from a particle from the front of the airfoil to the back, as we're marking by these, indicated by these red lines, um, the air that goes over the top of the airfoil, if you look closely, it has to travel further than the air that goes over the bottom. This is due to the shape of the airfoil itself and also the angle at which the air and the parachute is impacting the air. Now, what happens is you get a velocity that moves over the top of the airfoil of the air and you have a velocity of the air over the bottom. And the velocity of the air over the top is greater than the speed or velocity of the air over the bottom because it has to travel a longer distance. And what happens is that if you have higher speed air, which again, you have higher speed over the top, you actually have a lower pressure. So the pressure on the upper side of the parachute ends up being lower than the pressure on the bottom. So top and bottom, T and B, is how we're indicating it here. And this difference in pressure is essentially how lift is created. Pressure needs to equalize that. That's how wind works. And that's also how an airplane and a wing work. So these red arrows are indicating the pressure force exerted on the uh, parachute from the air around it. And you can see just visually that the pressure on the bottom is greater than the pressure on the top. And this difference in pressure is how lift force is generated. And a simple way of looking at that is that it's the difference in pressure multiplied by the area of the parachute is going to give you the total lift force. And so if we look on the bottom right, the area of the parachute that we're going to be considering here is actually going to be the area perpendicular to the force or the pressure differential. And if we're looking at it from the bottom up, it's simply the area that we're highlighting with the red rectangle. And this is area like any area of a rectangle is simply the multiplication of the length and the width, in this case, of the parachute. And that's gonna give us the area that we're gonna to use to calculate the lift force. And that calculation is fairly simple. It's lift, which we're gonna indicate as L, equals the area, the projected area that we just showed, times the pressure differential. And we're gonna indicate the pressure differential with delta P. So delta indicates any kind of differential. Or you can write that out as just the lift equals the area times the pressure on the bottom minus the pressure on top. And that's pressure on bottom, as we saw, is higher than pressure on top. That times an area is going to give you a force. So pressure times an area is always going to give you a force. And that's how lift is created. That's how drag is created. And we're going to go over that next. Now let's look at the direction of the airflow again. Uh, it's coming at, but a little more up against the wing. And drag is gonna be a force that acts in parallel to the airflow. Now, drag is made up of three components that we're gonna be talking about. And the first one is skin friction. And just by the name, 
we know friction, we're familiar with the concept. It's basically a force caused by air particles moving over the parachute or the parachute moving through air particles causing friction between the air and the surface of the parachute. And that's, you know, we're kind of showing it with a squiggly line, but it's basically friction on the parachute from the air. It's minor, but that's what you call skin friction. And that is one of the three components of drag. Now the next component, we're, we're gonna look at these streamlines. Notice that we drew, purposely drew the streamlines that are much closer together near the front of the parachute versus near the back, they're much more spaced out. And this is essentially what you think of as the wake. When you hear about a boat, there's a wake behind it. Same thing with airflow. There's some disturbance in the air caused by the parachute passing through it that happens behind it. And really what this is, is that as the airflow passes over the wing, as it's providing friction, so skin friction, at some point, the airflow actually detaches from the wing itself and causes eddies of recirculating air behind the wing. And this is what we know as the wake. And this wake is essentially causes a pressure differential um, between the air in front of the wing and the air behind the wing. And the wake itself has a lower pressure than the air coming in at the wing that has a higher pressure and if you remember just from how lift is generated higher pressure air wants to go to lower pressure air and so that's another component of drag and we're going to call that pressure drag and that is really pressure drag is also wake drag they could be called the same thing okay and finally we're going to talk about what we call the third component of drag which is called induced drag and to do this, we're going to flip uh, the image a little bit to the front of the parachute, just like we showed in the beginning. Now, a parachute is a 3D wing. It doesn't extend infinite on both sides, which is the cause of induced drag. Now, what we're visualizing here is we're visualizing the pressure on the bottom, right? just like we did for lift, is higher than the pressure on the top. This is what causes lift, but this is also what causes induced drag. Induced drag is a function of lift. The more lift, the more induced drag. And really, because this is a finite wing that has edges, air is going, going to try and escape from the bottom to the top. It's trying to equalize. Now, the air escaping from the bottom to the top actually causes vortices on the wingtips which you can think about as generated near the tips of the parachute in this case, and going back towards the wake of this parachute. And this is what you call induced drag, which is completely a function of lift because the more lift you have, the more pressure differential, the stronger the vortices, the more induced drag you have. And that's it. Going back to the side view, um, we now know that drag, which is a force acting back and in parallel to the airflow, is made up of three components. Skin friction drag, which is the friction between the air and the wing, or in this case, the parachute. We have pressure drag, which is really also can be known as weight drag, which is the pressure differential between the, the air coming in the front and the air coming in um, the aft of the, of the parachute. And induced drag, which is the air escaping ar al around the sides of the parachute. It's an inefficiency in lift, and it's completely a function of lift. So to summarize, you have the forces acting on the parachute, which are lift, drag, and weight. And lift and drag are what counteract weight, which is why a parachute slows your descent. And that's how it works. And if you found this interesting, there's so much more we can explore. We can explore how a person adds to the drag force of a parachute, how it changes the controls of a parachute, how you go left to right, how it flies, how we can predict how fast we're falling if we're leaning forward or leaning back, how you control a parachute, anything like that. So if you wanna see it, of course, hit subscribe, drop a like, maybe even a comment, and we'll have videos in the future that go over all of that. And until then, I'm gonna cut myself out of the video, I'm gonna drop Nick Merckx in here, and we're gonna watch what happens when you actually know what you're doing playing some Call of Duty. Until next time, goodbye. It is quite the... <laughs> Thank you.
used to be one of them, huh? 